but I appreciate you coming on the program tonight uh, to talk about this uh, a promotion that you have coming up this weekend for Father's Day. As I understand it, one gun in your store is going to have a price tag of a dollar, and there are a lot of uh, gun control advocates in New Zealand who say that this is outrageous. This is unbelievable. You're sending the wrong message. We already have enough gun owners in New Zealand, for goodness sakes. <laughs> You're onto it. Okay, so what's your reaction to this, Mr. Tipple? Well, I think it's the same old problem we always run into with the anti-gun lobby, that they are mainly operating from fear and from ignorance. They've got the idea that because it's only a dollar, there will be no other controls on it. In New Zealand, every firearms purchaser is licensed with a card, just like an American driver's license, and we cannot sell to the guy even for a dollar unless he has that firearms license, and he's already been tested and vetted by the police. He's already... Uh, had interviews of family and friends to see that he's a sta of stable mind and the police have inspected his home to make sure that he has the proper security for the firearm. Every firearm has to be in a, in a locked box in New Zealand. All right. Now, I've got to say, uh, as beautiful as New Zealand is, after you've told me the gun laws that you have to go through, I think I'll stay here in the United States. <laughs> even, <laughs> even given all of that, however... Uh, which would frankly be, uh, you know, th th that would just be uh, outrageous to most American gun owners. That's not enough. You've got this guy, Professor Kevin Clements, the director of the National Center for Peace and Conflict Studies, who says, quote, this one dollar gun will be surplus to their requirements. It's not a responsible promotion. It is an inducement for gun lovers and bargain hunters to come into a shop. How dare you induce as a businessman, individuals to come be customers, sir. What is wrong with you? <laughs> well, I had, the, I had the national firearms coordinator from the police department call me on that specific item, and he said, you know, we see this as a promotion, and we're not sure whether it contravenes the Gambling Act. I said, well, hold on. I said, what do I do that is not a promotion? The minute I put a gun in somebody's hand, I'm promoting it. And uh, they were confused. They were getting the idea that everyone was going to walk in the store and put a dollar in a, in a box and the winner would get the gun. But once it was made clear to them that this was a genuine sale, that the person would see the gun and then decide whether or not they wanted to buy it for a dollar, then they agreed that it was nothing to do with the, with the gambling app. But well, hey, what, what are we here for? We are here to make sales. And that's the reason that we've done this campaign to improve awareness. And hey, look, we're talking to the NRA and the mighty US of A. <laughs> certainly has, <laughs> it certainly has uh, created some interest. Oh, I can't wait to see what the media does with this interview in, uh, in New Zealand. Now, let me give you another quote here from uh, MP Keith Locke from the uh, Green Party. He says, quote, surely, surely the whole context of the sale of guns should be that guns are sold only for particular legitimate purposes. Hunters, for example, buy a certain type of gun for hunting. So is there really this attitude? And, and tell me, how prevalent is this that uh, you're not allowed well, to, to browse? Is this, is this only related to, to firearms in New Zealand? Or like, is there this attitude towards clothing? Can you just go to the grocery store and, and not know exactly what you want to pick up before you go into the store? No. The, the sad thing is that... The, the the media is always looking for hype. They want something they want something that is going to cause controversy, that is going to attract attention. So what they've done is they've gone to the extreme fanatics on the opposite side of anyone who thinks firearm uh, ownership is is uh, legitimate and, mm. and normal. And they've picked a guy who is from uh, Otago University who's come up with this. Uh, crazy idea that uh, if you've got a gun, you're going to kill people. And uh, the blogs on the internet have been amazing because one of his colleagues, another professor in the same university, was in the news just recently for stabbing uh, his girlfriend to death uh, whilst in the room of the girlfriend's parents. And so there's all sorts of uh, comments on the internet about that particular professor saying, yeah, we've seen that uh, professors from your university prefer knives. And another one said, if the parents of uh, that girl had a gun, then maybe she'd still be alive. So he's getting a real roasting on the internet. And as for the MP, Mr. Locke, well, uh, the, the comments on the, on the internet 
make it sound like he is a homosexual and he's been talking about hyper masculinity well of course that's just that's just brought the house down the the, the guys are going berserk so. yeah here's the here's the quote gun culture survived by promoting what is known as hyper masculinity uh, such yeah. hyper masculinity is somewhat out of sync with a masculinity that favors good parenting family attachments equality sensitivity to women and so on if you are a gun owner let me make sure I understand this correctly. According to this fella, if you're a gun owner, you're a bad parent, you, you have no attachment to your family, uh, you don't care about equality, you hate women. I'm guessing you probably have some female uh, gun owners who come into your store from time to time. My daughter has just come back from the States uh, this, this very morning, and she's represented New Zealand in trap shooting, and uh, we just won the Macintosh Trophy. It's an international prize we have we have thousands of female customers and when you hear this guy talking about hyper masculinity and then you see on the internet that people are talking about his homosexuality you start to wonder can he really comment on masculinity i gotta tell you i mean this is a uh, bizarre story All right, now so what type of crowd are you expected on on saturday david um, well, we'd like to think there'll be something like 200 people at the door when we when we open at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. All right. Well, listen, we uh, we wish you the best of luck. Now, since we're here in the United States, could you give us a hint? I mean, uh, you want to want to tell us any information about the gun that's going to be sold for a dollar? Uh, granted, you might have some people uh, tuning in from uh, from New Zealand this evening, so you don't want to give away the whole secret. But uh, I don't know. Is there a particular sec? Can we see? In the background, the section of the store where the dollar firearm will be located. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I can just swing the camera around to <laughs> where it's likely to be located. So uh, if, you look, if you look straight down that aisle there, uh, in one of our two thousand guns on the rack, uh, that's where it's going to be. And I'll tell you one more thing, Cam, is that we've decided because of the hype that. We, we, we were originally going to give away a gun of sort of, you know, this value. Yeah. But suddenly it's gone to this value because we, we, we don't want this number of people to be disappointed. We want them to actually enjoy it when the guy walks out with a very valuable firearm. And that's what we intend to do tomorrow. Well, congratulations, David. And uh, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program. I'd love to check in with you at some point in the future and really appreciate you joining us tonight. Okay. God bless America. Thank you, sir. David <laughs> Tipple, president of Gun City in New Zealand.